All right, everybody, good morning, happy Monday, the start of a new week, and the start of a new phase of the 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year cycle of the NFL. The preseason is over, and now we move on to final roster cutdowns. So this video, we're going to go position by position, and I'm going to give my thoughts on who makes the team who makes the practice squad, and who doesn't make the cut. Uh, we'll go over some players who I think are borderline and could easily go either way. And by the end, we should have a pretty good idea of what I think this roster should look like. Now, <clears throat> honestly, for us fans, any guess can be about as good as any other guess, right? There are things about these players and how the coaching staff and front office feels about them that we cannot possibly know. We hear about a handful of things that happen at camp. We see some things in the preseason, but there may be something about a couple of these players that these coaches really like that would be hard for us to know about as just fans. We would have to go to every training camp practice that they open up to the public. We would have to probably be present for... Uh, some of the uh, conferences with the coaches and maybe even participate in the Q&As to get an idea of that. So we're working off limited information, but um, this is going to be my best guess. And I doubt it will end up extremely close to the final product, but uh, hopefully it'll end up uh, somewhat close. So with that in mind, we're just going to go ahead and go position by position. We're going to assemble a 53-man roster a 16-man practice squad which for us will actually be 17-man because of the uh, bonus practice squad spot we get for Donkor and that leaves us with our cuts <coughs> excuse me so this chart as it is right now is as it was before the preseason game against the Chargers so we're going to make a few changes as I see fit okay here we go Quarterback is pretty simple. Uh, Russell Wilson's the starter. Geno Smith is the backup. I think the Chargers game pretty much solidified that. I have Sean Mannion as the practice squad quarterback. He's exactly what a practice squad quarterback is. Somebody with very little arm talent, but the skills and the smarts to kind of sort of run the offense. It wouldn't amaze me if we went to go get Magoo because he has more arm talent, but Mannion runs this offense better and is generally just a smoother player. So I think Mannion is our practice squatter and nobody gets cut because Magoo already got cut. Running back. Uh, I already made a video discussing running back and what I would do here, but right now I have Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, Alex Collins, and DJ Dallas on the active roster. Now, I have Travis Homer listed at fullback, but um, he's going to mostly be filling in as a third down blocking back and a special teamer, and the fullback thing is more nominal than anything else. But Carson, Penny, Collins, Dallas, if the current regime was not the regime that drafted Penny, I would say that Penny probably gets cut or traded, but Carroll and Schneider brought Penny to the Seahawks, so they probably have a connection to him that is not based in what he actually is as a player, but they they, they don't want to let him go unless they feel like there's a gun to their head. So I think we keep those four guys. Practice squad, I have Connor Weddington. I heard a lot of stuff about how this coaching staff really liked Weddington and, Weddington and felt like they could use his talents on the active roster this year, but... I didn't really see that much from him in the preseason, and I didn't hear very much about him from camp. So I think he probably sticks on the practice squad. And if and when somebody gets hurt, he might get called up, and we might get to see him on special teams a little bit. But uh, no active roster spot for Weddington. And honestly, it wouldn't amaze me if Josh Johnson took the practice squad spot from Weddington or made the practice squad along with Weddington. I wasn't enamored with Josh Johnson during the preseason, but he played okay. He did some decent things, and he showed some qualities that people really liked. As of right now, I still think Josh Johnson gets cut. I don't think we can put him on the practice squad because he'll just get picked up by another team because he has to clear waivers, and I don't think we can put him on the active roster. There's just no room. All right, so that's the running back situation. 
Now, fullback, like I already said, Travis Homer, nominally a fullback, but it's not particularly important. It's just a designation on the depth chart. I think that Homer will play a little bit on offense as a back, blocking out of the backfield, and maybe you'll see him line up as a fullback every now and then, but the only thing that really matters is that he makes the 53-man. Nobody on the practice squad, nobody on the cut list. Okay, wide receivers. Things get a little tricky again. Obviously, we have Metcalf at the top, Lockett number two, Eskridge number three. I feel like that unless Eskridge's toe flares up, that's pretty much set in stone. But then we get down to the fourth and fifth spots. Right now, I have Freddie Swain in number four because he has a year of passable NFL experience and he made a couple of decent plays in the preseason. Not anything amazing, but he made his presence known. Now, fifth behind him would be Penny Hart, and you could make a pretty good argument that Penny Hart should go above Freddie Swain because Penny Hart got a lot of uh, training camp hype. Penny Hart uh, didn't do a lot in the preseason because he got hurt, but there's reason to believe that there's a very nice connection there between Wilson and Hart. But for now, I have him fifth, mostly because he missed a good chunk of the preseason to that injury. Now, practice squad. This is going to be tough. We have at least one player on this practice squad that could be coveted by another team. But as things stand, I don't think we have a choice but to hope that they can sneak through. Uh, I have Cade Johnson, Aaron Fuller, and Cody Thompson as the practice squatters. It would not surprise me if we bumped Cade Johnson to number five and put Penny Hart on the practice squad just so we can protect Cade Johnson <clears throat> and because I don't think that anybody's going to pick up Hart. However, <clears throat> I think Penny Hart's special teams value puts him over the top. Cade doesn't really have that. However, putting Cade Johnson on the practice squad is a risk because I like him. I think he's good. I think he has a future in the NFL at some point. I don't know when, but I think he can be a good NFL player, and I hope he makes it through waivers. Uh, then you have Aaron Fuller, who's kind of the annual practice squatter at wide receiver at this point. And then you have Cody Thompson, who had a good camp, but I don't think it was enough to actually make the active roster. And that leaves you with your cuts. Darius Roberson, who actually caught a touchdown on Saturday, but I don't think it was enough to give him the roster spot. And then Travis Toivowin, who never really had a chance. So five receivers, three practice squatters, and two cuts. All right, tight end. Tight end, pretty self-explanatory at the top. Everett is the number one, clearly. Disley is the number two, great blocker, good depth, decent pass catcher. And Colby Parkinson is the number three. However, we don't know if Colby's going to be healthy week one. However, as soon as he's healthy, which I expect to be within the first month of the season at worst, <clears throat> he becomes the number three. So <clears throat> I think that pretty much speaks for itself. Tyler Mabry is my practice squad pick because he has some familiarity with being on this team's practice squad. The only guy who I could see taking that spot would be Cam Sutton because we did use him quite a bit in the last preseason game. We lined him up in a bunch of different places. I don't think that was enough to put him over Mabry, but it's debatable. And we also have Ian Bunting getting cut. Okay, now we go to the offensive line, and we have some potential shakeups here. <clears throat> so, left tackle to start it off, Dwayne Brown, if and when he shows up, will be the starter, obviously. I think Stone Forsyth played well enough in the preseason to where he can be the immediate backup. It's it's not something we feel tremendous about, but he didn't look completely lost out there. So I think he is probably going to be the nominal backup. And we have one practice water, Jake Curhan, who I think played pretty well in the preseason, honestly, especially what I expected uh, against second and third stringers. I understand he's not amazing, but Jake Curhan, I think, did a pretty decent job in the preseason on, enough to stick on this roster. So... He's the practice squatter, and then no cuts. Okay, left guard. Obviously, Damian Lewis starting. I have Jordan Simmons backing him up at left guard. He's got some decent NFL experience. He was a free agent that we signed this offseason. And then you have Greg Island, and you have Phil Haynes. So, let's hit the brakes for a second here. Phil Haynes had an awesome game against the Chargers. Phil Haynes 
has played well for the Seahawks in the past. Very limited experience, I will admit. But he did look pretty good for the Seahawks in the preseason. He looked pretty good for them in the Green Bay playoff game a couple years ago. So let's hold that thought with Phil Haynes. <clears throat> We're going to come back to him in a second here. Kyle Fuller, starting center for now. Uh, hopefully that does not last long. I... Uh, I don't think I said it in a video. I said it in stream. For those of you who don't know, Kyle Fuller had a pass protection grade against the Chargers of 21 from PFF. Out of 100. That is not just a bad center. That is a center who struggles to put his pants on and brush his teeth in the morning. So yeah, Kyle Fuller, hopefully he's not starting for long, but for the moment it looks like he has to. Ethan Posick backing him up. He should take the starting job pretty quickly unless Fuller plays a lot better. And then you have Pierre Lestage as the project on the practice squad. Pretty reasonable. And Brad Lundblade gets the boot as one of the cuts. He's one of the guys that we're cutting, I think we're cutting, who has a small chance of latching on as a practice squatter because he did play pretty well against the Broncos. But I don't think we view him as a more appealing potential future starter than Lestage. Lestage seems to be the guy that we're enamored with for 2022 and beyond. So, yeah, Fuller starting, Posick backing him up, and Lestage on the practice squad. That's your center room. All right, right guard. Obviously, Gabe Jackson starting. For now, we have Jamarco Jones backing him up, and Jared Hawker, who I did not hear a lot about in the preseason, could easily end up on the cut list just because he didn't really leave an impression don't be shocked if Hawker's out. For now, I have him in, but don't be shocked if he's out. But he, um, And then nobody behind him. So let's mix things up a little bit here. Phil Haynes. Really good game against the Chargers. Proven history. Let's put Phil Haynes on the active roster and throw Jamarco Jones down to the uh, practice squad. So... Jamarco Jones is still on his rookie deal. It's not unusual to throw a guy still on his rookie deal back on the practice squad to start the season. If and when injuries happen, you can call him back up. He's a veteran who has played multiple positions before. If Dwayne Brown is still sitting out by week one, then don't be shocked if Jamarco ends up as the starting left tackle for a game. But if everybody reports and everybody's ready to go for week one, then I think Jamarco Jones kind of finds himself as the odd man out of the veteran presences on the offensive line and ends up taking a practice squad spot for the time being. Um, you could easily argue Jordan Simmons, but Jordan Simmons is on a second contract, and I think those guys are much less likely to get put on the practice squad. So, also, don't be shocked if somebody gets a BS injury designation so we can get Jamarco Jones on the active squad to start the season. Like you might see somebody who we don't view as having much of a role this year to, um, or, or at least at the start of the season, to have an injury so they can miss the first three games and Jones can get called up. But for now, I'm going to say Jones gets moved to the PS. He didn't really impress me that much this preseason, at least not nothing over the top, and Phil Haynes kind of did. And we close out our look at the offensive line with right tackle Brandon Shell, nominal starter, of course, Cedric Ogbuehi back up. Look for Cedric O to also possibly be the left tackle if something happens to Dwayne Brown later. It's going to be him and Jamarco Jones chiefly competing for the backup left tackle spot if something actually were to happen. But uh, for the purposes of a depth chart, he's at right tackle. And then Tommy Champion makes the practice squad again. He played pretty decently against the Chargers, I think. He's a adequate practice squad player, I guess. That kind of sounds like a um, backhanded compliment, but he's a perfectly good guy to have around there. So that is our offense. That is 6, 7, 12, 15, 25, 25 offensive players, which is about what you would expect. We also have um, actually a lot of uh, practice squatters. We have, I believe, 12 practice squatters on offense. We, you might not see us utilize that imbalance. It would not shock me if we let somebody like uh, Jared Hawker go so we could have another defensive practice squatter, but this is my offensive projection. Okay, defense time. 
The defense is a little simpler. There's a little less guesswork here. I did make a big assumption when I said that Nick Ballor would be a linebacker this year because for a player like him who plays all three sides of the football, it doesn't matter that much. But other than that, there isn't a whole lot here to discuss. So Leo Dunlap starting, Alton Robinson backing him up, and Benson Mayo uh, cleaning up after both of them. So we're very deep at Leo. Um, no practice squatters at Leo and no cuts. So I don't think anybody's really going to dispute this array of Leos. The one tech, we have Al Woods starting, of course. You didn't bring him in to do anything other than be the big fat guy in the middle and Brian Monet backing him up. Pretty obvious, pretty self-explanatory, I think. No practice squatters and one cut in the form of Miles Adams, who actually did a decent thing or two in this preseason, but I can't see any room for him on the roster. Uh, Puna Ford is the starting three tech, but of course... Cannot forget about the Puna man and LJ Collier backing him up. Uh, you could make a you could make an argument that LJ Collier didn't do anything this preseason to actually earn this roster spot. If he ends up traded or cut or put on the practice squad, it would not blow me away because he just didn't do anything in the preseason. I feel like I don't feel like he made a single play that made me go, "Oh, there's LJ Collier," but. His first round grade should bail him out a little bit here, and he should at least get this season to prove something. So I think LJ sticks, but he could easily lose his playing time to a player I'm about to bring up. We'll get back to that in a second here. And then I have a Hewitt getting cut. Who a, Hewitt actually had a pretty decent preseason, but we don't need more defensive linemen. We already are pretty well stacked there. I think we're pretty good I don't think we need to uh, think about getting Hewitt snaps, too. All right. Five tech is where things get a little interesting. Kerry Hyder's the starter. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Rasheem Green is the backup. You could argue that we need to trade Rasheem Green and try to get a little bit of uh, a little something-something there. Maybe you could package him in a deal to a team that has a center that they're willing to let go. But... I feel like we're going to keep Rasheem Green, and that gets us to Kim Dietschy, who unfortunately, after what was supposedly a really good training camp, well, we didn't get to see him in the preseason, and I feel like some of the shine is off the apple there. So, I, after we cut Alden Smith, I said, okay, Kim Dietschy's going to be the dude now. I don't think I can say that at this point. So, I'm going to move Rob Kim Dietschy back to the practice squad here and we're going to take him off the active roster and I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say we're bringing in Geno Atkins. I, I really do think we're going to bring in Atkins at some point in the next few weeks. So I'm going to say he takes that roster spot and allows us to go 10 deep with pretty reliably decent players or a lot better than decent in some cases on the line. Uh, we go five deep at end. We go five deep at tackle. We go three deep at Leo, three deep at three tech. It's it's pretty good. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say we bring in Geno Atkins and Kem Dietschy will have to wait for his moment to shine. Maybe it'll come when LJ Collier uh, proves that he's a bust. Maybe. All right, so that is the defensive line. Let's move over to the linebackers. This one's pretty simple, although there is some interesting stuff at the bottom end. Middle linebacker. Bobby Wagner is the starter. No, uh, n nothing to it there. He's not making $17 million this year to be anything else. And Cody Barton is backing him up. Although, once you get into the realm of backup linebackers and reserve linebackers, the exact positional designation doesn't mean as much. It's just where they happen to be on the depth chart. If Cody Barton needs to fill in for Jordan Brooks, then I expect him to be able to do it. If he can, needs to fill in for an injured Daryl Taylor, I expect him to do it. So, um, no practice squatters and no cuts. Okay, Will is where things get a little interesting because... We have a handful of players here competing. Brooks is obviously the starter. I don't think he's done anything to lose that designation. He had a pretty good preseason. Nick Ballore is the backup, which, again, doesn't necessarily mean he only can come in for Brooks, but he's a backup linebacker, and I think he makes the team because he has great special teams and even a little bit of offensive value. John Radigan, who had a great game against the Chargers, makes the practice squad. And Lockheed Williams 
gets a little bit shafted by the whole Nick Ballore deal, but you but that's how it goes, and doesn't make the roster. Now, Lockheed Williams, I'm not ruling out the possibility that he squeezes onto the practice squad in place of Jared Hawker, or if we don't do the, the Ballore position switch, Lockheed could take the practice squad spot and Radigan could move up to the active roster, but for now, this is my guess. All right. Uh, Sam linebacker, obviously Daryl Taylor is going to be the starter here. Look for us to use Barton some as the Sam linebacker in certain sets, in certain situations, but I think that he's the starting Sam, Daryl Taylor for now. Aaron Doncor is a practice squatter because he has a free spot, and why not use it? We, we all know that he's going to be there. And he made a couple plays in the Chargers preseason game, I think, so I, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, he did pretty good. So... That's pretty self-explanatory, no cuts. Okay, cornerback. And this is the last area where we might have something to really discuss. DJ Reed, obviously going to be the starter, if healthy. Akella Witherspoon still has his starting job for the moment. Could lose it very quickly, I think, but I think Akella Witherspoon has it for the moment. Trey Brown, who played pretty well in camp and had a good uh, preseason uh, until he got hurt. Looks like he'll be ready to go for week one. Looks like that injury is nothing serious, so I expect him to be the third cornerback because we did draft him to play outside, not inside, remember. And then you've got the decisions. So we have Trey Flowers. I feel like Trey Flowers... I, I don't think Pete Carroll knows how to quit Trey Flowers. And to a certain extent, I didn't know how to quit Trey Flowers for a while too, so I guess I can kind of relate, but I don't think Trey Flowers is going to get cut yet. And then you have Demarius Randall, who... <sighs> this is tough. Demarius Randall is a veteran. He can play multiple positions. He has some special teams value. There are a lot of things there that are appealing, but as a cornerback, I didn't really see that much in the preseason. But I know Carroll really likes him, so I feel like he's going to stick. That being said, I would not be shocked if Heslop or Reed bumped up in front of him and Randall ended up a cut. And that would also free us up to keep somebody like Lockie M. Williams on the practice squad because it would Randall would not be a practice squatter. You, that kind, a guy like that, you wouldn't expect to ever land on the practice squad. He can find a job somewhere else probably. So Heslop had a nice preseason. John Reed was a guy we traded for, so we clearly have some regard for his game. I'm going to stick with this arrangement for the time being. I think I'm going to stick with it. I feel like this is what we're going to go with, but... The Randall spot is really interesting. I'm not that impressed with him, but I think Pete likes him a little too much. So yeah, five corners, two practice squatters, no cuts. And uh, nickel corner is a lot simpler. Ugo Amadi and Marquise Blair are the active roster guys. I will switch them. Marquise Blair becomes a starter at nickel. Ugo Amadi becomes a backup at nickel. And yeah, that's all there is to say. Sunderland is a cut, of course, because there's no room for him. So Sunderland's out. And yeah, that's it for nickel corner. Safety, strong safety, Jamal Adams with Ryan Neal backing him up. Now, again, these are just designations on a depth chart. Ryan Neal can play other positions if he needs to. So can Amadi, so can Blair. Honestly, so can Demarius Randall and Trey Flowers. But uh, Ryan Neal backing up at safety. I have Asari. Crosswell, Ashari Crosswell as a practice squatter because I know he left a good impression on the team in camp and he made one or two decent plays in preseason so I think he's going to stick as the practice squad safety and then no cuts and for free safety we have Quandre Diggs if and when he shows up spoiler alert he's going to show up eventually and uh, no practice squatters and Moon is our cut now, Moon actually did a couple of decent things against the Chargers, but nothing good enough to actually keep him on the 53-man um, the 50, or the practice squad. And, of course, we have special teamers. Jason Myers has that position on lockdown. Michael Dixon has that position on lockdown. And Tyler Ott has his position on lockdown. All right. So, you add it all up, and you end up with 53 players. 17 practice squatters. Again, there's a pretty big imbalance here. Um, there's definitely too many offensive players on this practice squad, but I think these are the guys that we're going to covet. I think the guys that we covet in terms of future prospects are offensive players. And then you have your, I believe, 11 cuts. 
and I'll say it again, the practice squatters could get picked up by other teams, so don't be shocked if some of them don't make it through, and then maybe we can go get somebody like a Lockie M. Williams or a Josh Johnson or a Cam Sutton or a Brad Lundblade to be on the practice squad instead. But this would be my 53-man projection plus practice squad. Um, I guess that's really all that can be said right now, so... I'll hit you guys up later. We might start hearing about cuts soon, later today, and we should get a full picture of the final roster tomorrow. I will make a video about it. And peace out, Go Hawks. Let me know what you think. Do you disagree? Do you agree? I'm going to hear about it either way, so I may as well ask for it. So let me know down below, and Go Hawks.